What a treat to be joined by our NHL analyst, Mike Johnson. It's been a while. Mike, you're in a Chicago uh, hotel suite on American Thanksgiving. How exciting is it to be in Chicago on American Thanksgiving? I mean, sweet might be overstating it, Jay, but I appreciate the sentiment. It's more like a room. Uh, <laughs> and it's not exciting at all to be here because there's nobody in the world in downtown Chicago. It's ghost town, tumbleweeds rolling down Michigan Ave. There's no magnificent mile. It's just empty locked, closed stores and restaurants. A lot of fun. It, sa it sounds sad in a way. So l let's make everybody happy with a little hockey talk. So the Leafs have now, with Klingberg on LTIR, just over $4 million in cap space. We don't know exactly how long Klinger Klingberg will be out, however, but it's given them a little flexibility in, in terms of who they might be able to call up. However, would you like to hold on to that space, Mike, and maybe make a bigger move down the road? And if so, is there something that you have in mind? Okay, so yeah, Klingberg's on LTIR. It'll allow them to call up extra forwards, carry a full 23-man roster, activate Connor Timmons, who's ready to come back, so they can use the short-term LTIR for that situation. But if Klingberg is unable to play and he has to miss the rest of the year, then absolutely, I'm taking that $4 million and I'm going out to address the position that John Klingberg was supposed to fill. Second line, right side defenseman. That, that's where you're going to try to get a player to go and, and, and fill that void that Klingberg has left. And yes, the obvious candidates are always in Calgary. You have Hannafin there. You have Zadorov there. You have Tanev there. If I had to pick any of the three, I would take Chris Tanev. Still an elite level defensive defenseman, which will largely be his role if he comes on this team. And one other wild card option, Jay. Sean Walker, who's that you say? Playing in Philly, makes under, makes under $3 million dollars and is a really solid defender, and he went to Bowling Green, so you know he's a good guy. But watch out for him. He's having a great year, and he won't cost as much as maybe those Calgary guys. Okay. One thing about Walker, and I like him as a player too, Mike, but if you're the Flyers and you're actually playing quite well right now, why would you give up a player like that? Talk to me in five weeks. They're going to okay. be out of the playoffs by then. Reality will set in. You're like, listen, we're not going to sign him for $5 million because he's playing well enough to want that kind of contract. Right. Let's go get assets to continue our rebuild. They're playing well now, but let's not get carried away thinking about playoffs just yet. Okay, that's a fair answer. I like that from Mike Johnson. Uh, how about the Oilers? They lose again Wednesday, so that's three losses in a row. This road trip has not been good for them, Mike. They've already replaced their coach. They've already sent their starting goaltender to the minors. We get a lot of talk from from other from your colleagues here at the network that they need to just bite the bullet, give up whatever they have to give up, and go out and get a real starting goaltender. Do you agree with that, Mike, or do you think it's already too late for this team? It's not too late, but it's getting very close, Jay. They're about 10 days away of poor play from being almost mathematically too far gone to get back to 94 or 95 points. It's just going to be too far to get there. So time is of the essence, and I'm – would never suggest a rash move by a GM, but in this case, yeah. If you're Ken Holland, or if he's not the one making the decisions, if you're Jeff Jackson, you have to go get a goaltender. Stuart Skinner's struggling in his second year. Calvin Pickard is not really a long-term viable answer. Everyone around the league knows you're uh, in a terrible bargaining position, but it doesn't matter. You're going to have to pay whatever it's going to take to go get a goalie, and I don't know if they're going to go get a, a, a Tier 1 goaltender, but you're going to get an upgrade. And whether it's James Reimer or Mackenzie Blackwood or Sam Montembeau or Alex Nedeljkovic, whoever that is, it's still a better option than what they have available right now. And they cannot wait anymore. In fact, I would be on the phone right now, Jay, saying, yes, I don't want to give him a third rounder. Yes, I don't want to give you a prospect. But I got to get a goalie. And I got to get a goalie starting today. So, yes, time is of the essence. They should make a aggressive move to get a goaltender right now. But as far as players, Jay... They're stuck with the group they have. It yeah. is on the players, the positional players they have, to figure it out, play better in front of that goaltender who should be new, and try to get this ship righted and moving in the right direction. One team that doesn't have to work, worry about their goaltending situation is the Vancouver Canucks. Man, they what a surprise and what a delightful surprise, Mike. Fourth overall in the NHL standings. Yeah, they're coming off a loss to Colorado, but overall it's been a terrific season for this team. And a big step forward for those three core players that you and I always talk about, Quinn Hughes, Elias Pettersson looking for a new contract, and Thatcher Demko. Of those three, whose progression has impressed you the most this season? Well, I think I'd say Demko because we don't want to undersell how great Hughes and Pettersson have been prior to this year. Yes, Hughes leading the league in scoring is very strange, and Pettersson being right there 
Um, maybe not predictable, but they were both amazing last year. They've both been really good in their careers. So maybe not the, the gigantic leap that Thatcher Demko has made, largely because of health. He hasn't been healthy. And when you look at him, the wins, the saves, the goals against average, he's leading the league in goal save above expected. Like, these are the kind of numbers the best goalie in the league puts up. And while I think a lot of us thought Thatcher Demko could be one of the top-tier goalies, not a lot of guys thought maybe he'd be the best goalie in the league through a quarter of the season. He has been that, and to me, to me that's the biggest surprise in Vancouver and the biggest reason why they are where they are in the standings. You know, as good as Vancouver's been, Mike, I think the Jets' success might even be a bigger surprise to me. You know, like, uh, second among points among Canadian teams, no Wheeler, no Dubois. They just keep rolling, and now they've won four straight. In your opinion, Mike, what's been the reason for their strong start, and why is it my favorite player, Adam Lowry, the team captain? <laughs> Who doesn't love Adam Lowry? He's such a beaut, and he's playing really well, scoring goals, had the overtime goal the other day in Tampa. Uh, but I think part of turning over the way, the dynamic in the room, the leadership, and not to say that anything was wrong with Wheeler or Shifley, but just having a different feel has been part of their uh, resurgence this year. But they're getting great performances from their best players. I and mean, Kyle Connor being a league leader in goals, and Mark Shifley's had a fantastic season. Josh Morrison has been great. Their offense has been really, really solid. And they are where they are, Jay, with Connor Hellebuck just having been okay. He can still play better, which makes them even that much more dangerous. But largely star-driven, their top players have all responded to the changes that have happened and played their best hockey so far. I didn't see this out of this group so this year. Uh, it's been a pleasant surprise, but you know, that's A lot of sense. Uh, do you see any of those three teams making it to the dance? Well, let's go with the easy one, Jay. Montreal's not making the playoffs. Right. Okay? That <laughs> one I feel pretty comfortable saying. They're not supposed to, and they're not going to. Calgary is a little bit tougher. Uh, they, they've played better as of late. The West, the bottom of the West is not super strong. There are teams that can be caught. But I'm worried about what that team looks like in a month or two or three. How many defensemen leave? Yeah. Does Lindholm leave? You know, it would be a different kind of vibe. I want to root for the Sens, and I do think there are some catchable teams, not likely in the Atlantic, but maybe as the second wild card, because the Metro might only get three teams. You got Washington in there. You got Philadelphia in there. You got Pittsburgh around there. Those are the teams are going to have to catch. If they get goaltending, if they play some defense, I want to say Ottawa has the best chance of the three, but I wouldn't say they're likely to make it, but they probably have the best chance of the three. All right, Mike, Black Friday, 15 games on the NHL schedule. It's been a while since we've had your alter ego mystic Mike on the show. <laughs> uh, so can you give us some of your best bets for Friday's slate of NHL games? And, of course, this is all brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. All right, so like a lot of options, a huge slate of games, as you mentioned. I'm going to start in Toronto. I got Toronto covering the spread of one and a half against Chicago. Chicago, it's all kind of chaos right now. They've lost five in a row. Players are missing. They're getting scored on a ton. Uh, I think the Leafs will come back from Sweden, build on that, and have a really good game. I like the Kings, who have been perfect, Jay. 8-0-0 on the road to go on the road and beat Anaheim once again. And you know what? It's not gone well for McDavid. It's not gone well for the Edmonton Oilers. It feels like it's a must-win game. He's got four goals in his last five. Why not score one more against Washington? Those are my three best bets parlay for plus 495. Cash on that one, Jay, and you can do some nice Black Friday shopping and entertain yourself. Yeah, maybe I'll buy myself a, a new tie. People are questionable questioning this one I'm wearing right now, Mike. <laughs> Mike, uh, I hope you have a great... You're going to head down... Well, now You're going to go down to the hotel lobby, maybe grab yourself a little Thanksgiving meal. What are you going to do? Yeah, I think we got some of the crew downstairs. There's no restaurants open, as we mentioned, so it's going to be hotel lobby. It's going to be two plates of a turkey dinner, extra stuffing, extra gravy. Watch the football game and feel sick and go to sleep. You know what? That actually sounds pretty. Other than the sick stuff, that sounds pretty good. Mike, you're the best. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the game tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon, buddy.